If you're a regular gamer, you'll be pleased to know all the standard controls apply. Move your mouse to the edge of the screens to pan the camera. You can also use the WASD keys. Hold the right mouse button and move your mouse sideways to rotate the camera. You'll notice that there are three buttons on the upper edge of your screen. The door button will open the seller manager. The chateau button will open the chateau information menu. The worker action button expands to show you all the actions that are currently available to you. When you begin a new game, you start out with three tiles. The chateau tile, an environmental tile, and a planting tile. All other adjacent tiles are white meaning you don't own them yet. Environmental tiles, like forest tiles, impart benefits on all adjacent planting tiles. The chateau tile represents your headquarters. Planting tiles are where grapes can be planted. There are three types of planting tiles, each with a unique soil type. Clicking on an empty planting tile will bring up the grape variety menu. Here, you can choose which variety you want to plant, but certain grape varieties only grow on certain soils. Vines start producing leaves and grapes every February. Harvest begins in September. Remember that all vines cost money to plant and maintain. You only need to plant a vine once on each tile. However, if a vine dies, you'll have to replant it. The secret to a successful vineyard is the way you manage your vines. Your vines go through four stages of growth. No foliage, light foliage, optimal foliage, and heavy foliage. Notice the ripeness meter on the right-hand panel. This tracks the ripeness of your active grape varieties. Your vines grow every time it rains. The more the foliage, the more your vines block out sunlight, resulting in a drop in ripeness. The less foliage your vine has, the more sunlight it gets, which increases ripeness. Grapes that are too ripe or too unripe can lead to overexposure or rot, respectively, which decrease the amount of grapes you have and affect the quality of your wine. The objective of canopy management is to keep your ripeness balanced between 4 and 7. Harvesting grapes at these levels ensures the best results. When you expand your worker actions, you'll notice the shears button. The shears will allow you to manually trim a vine's foliage, keeping your vine's foliage. Worker actions allow you to better manage your vines. In the beginning, only the shears action is available. You'll be able to research more actions later on. Remember that when a vine is in a state of heavy foliage, ripeness drops. With light foliage, ripeness increases during clear skies. With no foliage, ripeness increases by two on clear skies. With optimal foliage, ripeness does not change regardless of the weather. Each vine produces 0.2 tons of grapes every month. Harvest season is from September to the end of November. Notice the icon on your chateau, which notifies you that your grapes can now be harvested. Clicking on it begins the harvest. This is your harvest report. Wine and terroir has four characteristics, acids, sweetness, tannins, and body. Getting these characteristics right is crucial to making good wine. Once harvesting is complete, the winemaking process begins. After harvesting, the crushing process comes next. Clicking on the crushing notification opens up the crushing menu. Crushing your grapes releases tannins, which adds strength and bitterness to your wine's flavor. There are different methods that take different amounts of time and have different effects on tannins. The default method of crushing is pigage. More options can be unlocked later. After crushing comes fermentation. Fermentation transforms sugars into the good stuff, alcohol. Clicking on the fermentation notification opens up the fermentation menu. Leaving your wine to ferment will decrease sweetness. You can choose how long you want your wine to ferment with a maximum of four months. After fermentation comes pressing. Pressing releases acids in your wine. Clicking on the pressing notification opens the pressing menu. 
where you can adjust a proportion of pressed juice to free run juice. Adjusting the slider determines how much your acidity increases by. The more pressed juice in your wine, the higher your acidity will increase. It's now time to store your wine. Clicking on the aging notification once pressing is done brings up the aging menu. Different types of storage have different effects on your wine. They may also impart unique flavors on your wine, which increases its value. The default storage type is common oak and others can be unlocked. Once you've successfully made a wine, it will be stored in your wine cellar. Clicking on the Cellar Manager button opens the Cellar Manager menu. This is your Cellar Manager. Here you'll find all your wines, both barreled and bottled. Right now, your wine is stored in common oak barrels. Every month, your wine's characteristics change depending on what storage type you chose. Once you're satisfied with your wine's characteristics, you can begin bottling them. Naming and choosing your wine's bottles are mostly an aesthetic choice, but do make sure you only use white wine bottles on white wine. Choosing between screw cap and cork will affect the cost of bottling, but using cork also makes your wine more expensive. Before you can sell your wine, you need to get it rated first, which will determine what your wine's value is. To get a wine rated, you need to open the Cellar Manager, go to the Bottles tab, and click on the Organize Wine Tasting button on an unrated wine. To organize a wine tasting, you need to invite three wine critics. Note that each wine critic has a prestige rating. This indicates how strict they are when it comes to judging your wine. Critics will automatically generate a final rating based on the average of each critic's individual rating. The final rating will determine the suggested retail price. You can now sell the rated wine on the market. Building relationships with your wine distributors is essential to a successful wine business. The more high quality wine you sell to a particular distributor, the higher your relationship rating with them goes. Reaching a relationship rating of 5 with the distributor unlocks benefits. Note that when you sell a wine to a distributor, the speed at which they manage to sell your wine depends on the rating. Low rated wines sell slower than high rated ones. A distributor can only sell a limited number of wines and cannot buy more wines from you while they are still selling your stock. When selecting an unowned tile to purchase, you can either buy the current tile type or re-roll to change the type. Be careful though, as the more you re-roll a tile, the more expensive each subsequent re-roll gets. When you hover over the re-roll button, you'll notice that the tooltip shows the price of re-rolling to be much more expensive than the first time. Great, now you own more tile. In Terroir, buying a new tile makes all adjacent tiles visible. You can have as much as 33 tiles.